Hello, and welcome to the online worship services for Island Creek United Methodist Church, Mount Point United Methodist Church, and Fenty Gap United Methodist Church. If you will, please join me in a word of prayer. Lord Almighty God, we thank you for this day, for this beautiful day. We thank you for all the gifts that you have given us, not only today, but in the past and in the days to come. We pray that the words of your scriptures give us comfort and wisdom, that they give us guidance and peace. And let us become your people, your people who love one another, just as we were told to do, to love you and to love each other. In Jesus' most holy name we pray, amen. The scripture for today comes from Psalm 33, verses 1 through 15. Sing joyfully to the Lord, ye righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make music to him on the tin-stringed lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, their starry host by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea into jars. He puts the deep into storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him, for he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. The Lord foils the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of the peoples. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever. The purposes of his heart through all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all humankind. From where he sits enthroned, he watches all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all and observes all of their deeds. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Growing up, my parents had a video camera. Not an abnormal thing today, but back in the late 80s, not too many people had home video cameras. Well, not too long ago, I took the time to sit and watch those videos that my father faithfully recorded. My very favorite video of them all was recorded outside at our swing set. My grandparents were there, my uncle, my mom, and of course, my father as he held that heavy video camera. They were laughing and joking while one-year-old me was just sitting and watching as my grandfather did backflips and handstands on the rings, the rings of the monkey bars, better than my uncle. Well, I mention this story because of how important those videos have become today. Three of those people in that video are no longer with us. But what you would notice as you watch all of the videos is that my father is not in a single one of them. He's always on the other side of the camera, 
providing his commentary and his radio announcer voice, but never seen. We don't see God. We don't always hear God. We sometimes might wonder if God is even listening to us. We wonder if God hears our cries or feels our pain. You all have known me long enough to know that I believe that God always hears us. God listens to our cries, though at times they are many. I know that many of you are worried for the future in different ways. I know some of you are worrying about the change that may come to our individual churches or to our churches in the United Methodist Church worldwide. You also have worries in your own everyday lives separate from church. I hear those worries and God hears those worries. My response to you today and to your worries is this. Turn to our scriptures. Turn to the words of old and let them guide you. Let them comfort you. Know that your worries are understandable and valid. But know that those worries, they can be soothed and some of them can be answered by God. This psalm that I read earlier is one that offers a great reminder and comfort. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. Our God is faithful. Our Lord loves righteousness and justice. Our world is full of the love of God. If only we take the time to look for it. I would be lying if I said that looking at the world at a passing glance, I see that it's good. We see many hard things, sad things in our world when we turn on the news or when we read it. We hear of wars, we hear of rumors of war, pain, sickness, violence. Our world, in many ways, it's hard. It's hard. There was a movie that came out quite a few years ago named Pollyanna. In it, a girl has lost everything. Her parents, her home, everything. She's sent to go live at her Aunt Polly's house. Over the course of the movie, she teaches her town to look for the good. Because her father, a missionary, taught her that. But at the end of the movie, she has an accident. And she doesn't want to look for good anymore. She'd been hurt just one too many times. But the town, the town that learned from her, responded in love, and they come together, 
and give her hope again. Calling their town the glad town because they can find something to be glad about. Hmm. Now, that might be a movie, but in our town, towns, I have seen the same thing happen. I have seen when those who are hurting are helped by strangers. I have seen the power of a community coming together to help their neighbors. I saw this years ago and I just saw it again not many days ago. Our world is not without good in it. Our world is not without love. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall become pregnant and give birth to a son. And they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Matthew 1, 21 through 23. These are words that the angel said to Joseph on that day very long ago. Jesus is with us. Emmanuel is with us. Which means that God is with us always. On this, my last Sunday with you, I want to make this knowledge abundantly clear that in our world there is hope. Hope because of the gift of Jesus Christ. A gift that brings us comfort, peace, and above all, love. A gift in which we are able to draw closer to God. And so, on this day, I would like to remind you of one final passage of Scripture. Words told to us in the book of Matthew, chapter 22. Words said by Jesus. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, an expert in the law, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets. You might ask yourself, what do all of these seemingly random verses of Scripture have to do with each other? What they all have in common is love. The love of God for God's people. The gift given in love by Jesus Christ. The command that we must love one another. We have many things in our lives that we don't always remember to do. We don't always remember to love each other. 
we don't always remember that God is with us. We have a hurting world. But God, God doesn't want us to fail. We were never created to fail. We were given the gift of, well, <laughs> the gift of being able to decide whether we would love God or not whether we would follow God or not. And we call it free will. Loving God and loving God the right way. Loving our neighbors the right way. That is what we should do with their free will. We should not use it to hurt each other. We should use it to love each other. And so this, my last message with you here, is to remember that we are a world changed forever by an act of love. An act of love that sadly happened because we failed. So I ask you one last time, as I leave you here, and let the next person lead you and guide you, remember, do everything in love, and remember to hold God, our Lord, above all things, if you'll join me in prayer. Lord, on this beautiful day, help us to remember the gift of your love, the gift of your peace. And as we enter into a new season, I ask that you give us all courage and wisdom that we can be your people and that your church we will allow to be your church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.